Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, let's pick up where we left off. This is part two. Um, 1 John 4.4. 4. Okay. 1 John 4.4. 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater, the, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What's that talking about? Okay. He that is in you. The Spirit of God. Okay? It's masculine. That's why it's He. Doesn't mean it's a person. Just because people say, well, it says He, therefore it's a person. No, it isn't. Okay? You have He goats. Okay? He is not always a person because they have to have a body, a soul, and we're always referred to someone who's living. An animal, when you say a He goat or a She goat, an animal only has a spirit and a body. They don't have all three. So just because it says he there doesn't mean that, oh, that, you, that proves that the, the spirit of God's a person. No, it doesn't. Okay. Once again, we keep proving this time and time again. No, it doesn't. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What's it talking about here? Oh, it's talking about Satan. No, it's talking about the Antichrist spirit. Yes, ultimately it goes back to the lowercase g God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Jesus, uh, Satan, and Jesus said, I will be with you, God in you, I will be in you, the Holy Spirit's going to be in you. Okay, whatever the Holy Spirit hears, that shall he speak. God the Father speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. That's why it says God in you, not God the Spirit. It's saying God the Father in you. How? Because you have the Holy Spirit in you. But greater is the Holy Spirit in you, brothers and sisters in Christ, than the Antichrist spirit that's in the world. Greater is he that is in you, Jesus Christ, than he that is in the world, Satan. Greater is he that is in you, God the Father, than he that is in the world. All these lowercase g, gods, plural, that's in the world. 1 John 4.12 says, No man hath seen God at any time. Remember, we already talked about how Jesus is the image of God. He's the body. God the Father is the soul. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, this is 1 John 4.12. We'll get to it again. We're going to go over it again. But I brought it up a little bit. 1 John 4.12. No man hath seen God at any time. It says, he that, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No man see God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. So who's the he there? Okay, I know for the uh, Holy Spirit, I said he's it's masculine. God is a man. Body, soul, and spirit is a man. Jesus Christ. But the he there, I brought up God the Father in you. It's saying God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. But the Holy Spirit has no connection to God the Father. They're not one and the same. They all share the title of God and they're one in essence, but they're not one and the same. Do you have God the Father, the soul, of, inside you? You have the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit of God. And if you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, guess what? You have God the Father in you. That's what the scriptures read. 1 John 4, 3, this is that spirit of Antichrist. Greater is he that is in you, God the Father, through the Holy Spirit. They're connected. They're one. Okay. The distinction is body, soul, and spirit. Then he that is in the world, Satan, the lowercase g God of this world, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour through the Antichrist spirit that's going out there in the world. Okay. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. And that's the thing that gets me. Greater is he that is in you. And then you go down further, and people need to keep reading. It says that God dwelleth in us. Who's the us? Saved sinners. People who vehemently defend this trinity, this pagan trinity, that ultimately is an Antichrist and an Antichrist spirit. Okay? God does not dwell in them. It can't, because God the Father is not the, the Spirit of God. 
God the Father is not God the Spirit. There's no connection. Okay? So God's not capable of dwelling, dwelling within them. Why? Because they worship a false god. They worship Satan as an antichrist, and they've received an antichrist spirit. Now, what does the Antichrist spirit promise people? We'll say this again. We'll talk about this in part one. What does he promise people? You can have the world and be a Christian. You can call yourself a Christian and continue in your sin all you want. You can be the Lord of your own life. You get to decide what you want to believe in. There's no foundation of authority other than yourself. That's the whole point. And when yourself is the final authority, or you're listening to Satan as your final authority, greater is he that is in you, the Holy Spirit of God, God the Father in you, than he is in the world. I have, God has given me final authority right here. I hold myself accountable to it, and I hold the brethren accountable to it. You guys can hold me accountable to it, and you better be holding yourself accountable to it. Not just being so quick to hold other people accountable to it. Make sure you start with yourself. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. Okay, the body of Christ. There's two parts that I teach on that. One, it's talking about, hey, the judgment seat of Christ happens first, then the great white throne happens, after the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. Okay, but before the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, the judgment seat of Christ happens. But it also talks about, brethren, we start with ourselves. We are the house of God. This is a body, for, is this temple for the Holy Ghost. We judge ourselves first, then the body of Christ, then the world. Okay? Because if you're not judging yourself for first, you're going to wind up being a hypocrite. When you go to tell the lost world, that's sin. You're a sinner. You need Jesus Christ. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to get saved. You have a sickness, and that sickness is sin. But if they look at you, and you're just living in wicked sin because you're not judging yourself first, you'll be seen as a hypocrite. You'll lead brothers and sisters in Christ astray and cause them. The Bible warns about not putting a um, stumbling block in front of your brethren, in front of the brothers and sisters in Christ, and causing them to stumble because you're not judging yourself first. John 8.58 reads, Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. I'm sorry. My notes, I was going back to my notes. I had to remember where we left off. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, The Antichrist Spirit in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We're going to go over the same scriptures time and time again, brothers, this is Christ. Okay. Who is the image of God. Greater is he that is in you. If God, the Father, is not the Spirit of God, how does God the Father dwell in, in a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman? Well, if you believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, it's simple and it's easy. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. God dwelleth in us. How? By the Holy Spirit. The Holy, the Holy Spirit of God, remember we talked about it, capital S Spirit of God, is connected to God the Father. That's how they're one and the same. Whatever he hears, that shall he speak. God the Father speaks through the Holy Spirit. He repeats it to us, and that's how we have God the Father in us. Who is the image of God should shine unto them. I'm just hoping this stuff sinks in. Okay, Jesus is the body. God the Father is the soul. The Spirit of God. Jesus, the Son of God. Capital S, Son of God, is the body. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. Also known as the Holy Ghost. And then the Father, there's only one capital G God. That's why you always hear me say God the Father. There's only one God. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And it's the Father. Time and time again, God the Father. Our God and Father, God is the Father. It's the soul. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober. First we talked about before. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walked about seeking whom he may devour. 
Stop there for a second. Remember it says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know how people get devoured? Because they don't know the word of God. They're not hiding God's word in their heart. They're not living it. They start falling. And see, Satan comes around and devours them. What does the Bible say? I can do all things through what? Through who? Christ which strengtheneth me. You stop going through Christ, guess what happens? You become vulnerable. You start taking off the armor of God, the helmet, a hope for salvation, the chest plate of righteousness. Hey, God is my Lord. He's who I fight for. He's who I serve. He's Lord of my life. That's what that breastplate of righteousness is for. Jesus is Lord of my life. He commands, I obey. It's not just something cool you put on to look cool. Okay, The shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit. You gird up your loins with the, with the Word, with truth. The sword of the spirit. Okay? And then the feet shod with the preparation of peace. Okay? Preaching the gospel, the plan of salvation. But the adversary of the devil, he goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he devour. If you if he can get you to stray from this book, if he can get you to twist words, change definitions, add to, subtract, ultimately, if he gets you to think and start acting like you are the final authority. He can devour you. Okay. Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith? God said, Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my words see, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He said them three times in the four gospels. What is your faith in this book? People say, Well, I believe it's you have a lot of faith. It can fall people, fakers, that will come along and say, I believe this is the word of God. Are they living it? No. Some of us are. Brothers and sisters of Christ, you're going to come across brethren that are truly saved and born again, that are doing their best to follow this. They fail sometimes. Absolutely. But they deny themselves, they pick up their cross daily, and they get back to following this book and serving Jesus Christ. That narrow path. Broad is the way, the path that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life eternal. Okay, we're following that narrow path. We're not earning salvation. Once God saves you, you're saved. Salvation from hell is God's salvation. Belongs to Him. All right. The study that we're going through recently about bodies, um, cares of this world, uh, deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things, it's talking about salvation in this life. I'm trying to warn you, brothers and sisters of Christ, about salvation in this life. Okay? Standing for the real Jesus Christ and not falling away for an antichrist. Not giving back into the world. Dropping your cross. Getting prideful. So you won't deny yourself. It says, Whom resists steadfast in the faith? If you resist the devil, he must flee. Okay? you got to stand for the truth. Okay? And the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, right now I'm being hated because I stand for the King James Bible. And as we go through life, like I said when we started this study, sometimes you go through things in life and God opens the scriptures to you and reveals things to you in His time. So I'm standing for the Word of God and I realize I'm really attacking it when I use, ver use terms that aren't in the scriptures, that actually are, con how do I say it, counter, I almost want to say counterproductive, but that's not the word. That's basically, you have words that go against each other. They get you to add words to the scripture, and I was doing it, that the scripture said this, and I would say that. Rapture versus caught up, they're not the same thing, but you're told the same thing. They're not the same thing. Okay? Great Tribulation is the title for that time period and the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, it's the same thing. No, it is not. No, it is not. Okay. I started standing for the Word of God. God started getting all the junk that I was lied to and deceived from in these battle buildings. He started getting it out of my life. And the more and more He got that stuff out of my life, the more and the more the world hated me for this book. The more people even... To, to this very day, even people who profess to be Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women, the more I stick to this book and the more God cleans up my vocabulary and cleans up my life, the more and more they hate me. 
Why? Because Jesus is capital Lord of my life. I have God in me opening the scriptures to me, convicting me, saying, why are you saying this when it's not in scripture? Why are you saying that when it's not in scripture? I'm getting convicted. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters Christ, if you're truly standing for the Word of God and the true Godhead of the King James Bible and the Jesus Christ who is, capital L, Lord of your life, and He's cleaned up your life, you've got testimony after testimony, how He saved you multiple times in this life as a Christian, salvation in this life, not salvation at the cross, but salvation in this life as a Christian, how many times that you've screwed up and fallen and fell flat on your face and God has saved you and picked you back up, Okay, you're standing for the Word of God, you're living for Jesus Christ who is the Lord of life, you have testimonies on how you're going through afflictions. Okay, You're getting tempted, you're getting provoked, you're getting prodded. Okay, you're also going, th you're suffering for Jesus Christ. This is what it means, brother, says Christ. That verse, I don't even have that in my notes. The verse that talks about suffering, if we suffer for him, we shall also reign for him. You know what it means to truly suffer for Jesus Christ? You stand for the true Jesus Christ of Scripture by saying, He's Lord of my life, and your actions back it up by the life that you live for him. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes, Lord. Be not conformed to this world. Yes, Lord. Uh, friendship of the world is enemy with God. Okay, Lord, i got to get some people out of my life that just they are tempting me. I don't, I don't need that temptation. Oh, Lord, I really have to give that up. Lord, you're the Lord of my life. You command, I will follow. The body of Christ as a whole is suffering for standing for the Godhead of the King James Bible, the Jesus Christ of Scripture. That's what it means to suffer for Jesus Christ. These people that are getting tired, I see this with the brethren, they're getting tired and tired of suffering for Jesus Christ, so they're going back to the world. And if we suffer with Him, we shall also reign with Him. There's people who are saying, I'm, I'm done suffering, I'm just going to give in and go the way of the world. And they're falling away. The Bible talks about the falling away. Okay, make sure that Jesus is the Lord of your life, and His command, He commands us, and we obey, and the world hates you for it. Understand, you're not alone. You're not the only one. But Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He sees, oh, look, there's that Christian over there. He took off the breastplate of righteousness. He took off the helmet. Oh, he laid his sword down. Oh, he set down the shield. Oh, his feet hurt. He took off the shoes. He's ripe to be devoured. And he'll come and he will mess you up. Okay? He's already doing it to the lost world. Look how bad it is out there, brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, seriously, look at it. Absolute truth has no place in this world. In this wicked, wicked world. They want nothing to do with absolute truth. They want their truths. In other words, they change God's word, of the truth of God, into a lie. They want their lies and they want to call it truth. And it's my truth. They don't want absolute truth anymore. I've tried giving out gospel tracts. I've said this before. I've tried giving out gospel tracts. Nobody wants them anymore. I had one man finally take one. But all the other times, it's, no, I don't want one. No, I don't want one. 1 John 4, 5. Get back to 1 John 4, verse 5. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. People say this Trinity thing, it's, it's it, Godhead versus the Trinity, it's not that big of a deal. Then why is it the world as a whole rejects the Godhead? The Catholic Church hates the Godhead of the King James Bible. They hate the King James Bible. They're okay with Trinity. They love Trinity. All these false religions have their Trinities. Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, on and on and on. All these different Christian denominations. Even flat out pagan religions have their God's plural that they worship. Okay? They are of the world, therefore the world hear therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. What does first John two fifteen say? Love not the world. It's one of those memory verses that we get. <laughs> love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why is that? 
Because if they love the world, that means they have the Antichrist in them. The love of self, the love of the flesh. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. The Spirit of God, the love of the Father, is not in Him. Notice what we read up there. God dwelleth in us. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. It's talking about the Spirit of God. Okay? Even though it's talking about the Father, they're one and the same. They're connected. The distinction is body, soul, and spirit. That's where they differ. And the biggest thing I put in my notes here for you, brothers and sisters of Christ, that can attest to this, I was part of the false religion, uh, Babel buildings, non-denominations. Sometimes I, I was part of Foursquare. So Foursquare, they had every denomination. So you could have something that kind of looks vaguely familiar, the old-fashioned religion, all the way up to the charismatic nuts. Okay, The people that are possessed with devils, the Antichrist spirit just really shines through them. Okay. I was part of that system. The way of the world are trinities. They love their trinity. Every single one of them. Every denomination that I went to. I went to Bible college for a year. Foursquare Bible College down in California. Okay, L.A. area. All right. I think it was San... It's L.A. County, but San Bernardino, I think it was. I can't remember the exact uh, city, but it's, uh, it's L.A. County area. All okay. right. They love it. That's the way of the world. Okay, That's why you love not the world. When something's very popular with the world, like the Trinity, you have to stop and say, wait a second. Am I living truth and they've taken something and perverted it? Or are they adding something completely foreign to Scripture? Either way, I need to stay away from it. With the Trinity, they're taking something that's completely foreign to Scripture and perverting the Word of God, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. They're trying to pull people away from the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. They're, Satan's trying to use them, these wolves in sheep's clothing, to promote a false system to blind the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine, shine unto them. They don't want them finding the true Jesus of Scripture. The Godhead is not popular with this world. The world does not love the Jesus of the Godhead. They hate Him. And by Him being in us, they hate us. I see it more and more. And we're going to start getting in here where it starts talking about how it likens loving the real Jesus Christ, confessing that He is come in the flesh, is come as a title for God the Father in the flesh. God in the flesh. He's God the Father. No, He's not. Now look at these people, how they treat me. Who stands for the Godhead of the King James Bible, using only the Scriptures. Not adding to it, not subtracting to it, not changing definitions. Right? How do they treat me? They have no love for me whatsoever. 1 John 4, 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. That's where the Bible talks about where the Holy Spirit bears witness. The, my spirit and the Holy Spirit in me can bear witness with you, your spirit, and the Holy Spirit that's in you. The Spirit of God. Okay? He that is of God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And I put it up here, I'm pointing at my mouth because it's man's words. Feelings and opinions. Philosophy. Remember what the Bible says about philosophy. Philosophy can spoil you. It can ruin a Christian. Okay? Spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. After the rudiments of the world, after the traditions of men, and not after Christ. You start falling into the trap of pointing people to an antichrist. You start getting manipulated by an antichrist spirit. You start getting spoiled as a Christian. And when it does, when something spoils, it means it's going bad. It's becoming ruined. Oh man, have you ever cooked something and said, Oh, this is spoiled. This is bad. We can't eat this. It's ruined. 
That's what happens. Okay. The spirit of truth versus the spirit of errors. What's the spirit of truth? The capital S spirit of God. That's the spirit of truth. What's the spirit of error? The Antichrist spirit. When I'm in error, this isn't the spirit of error. Hear, hear me out, brothers, this is Christ. When I'm in error and a brother in Christ comes to me and shows me in Scripture, hey, what you're doing there, or how you kind of said that thing there, you're wrong in what you said. And here's the Scriptures to show the truth. The capitalized spirit in me, the spirit of truth, will make me look and go, you know what? You're right, brother. I was wrong. You know what the spirit of Antichrist spirit is? They don't care how much Scripture you show them, they're not going to listen. I don't want to hear it. I don't care. I'm not going to hear it. I love the spirit of error. That's the difference. That's when you know someone has a spirit of error. When you preach the plan of salvation found in the scriptures and they deny repentance, they deny prayer, they deny the changed life after salvation, no matter how much scripture you throw at them, they don't care, they don't want to hear it. You're dealing with an antichrist spirit. Same thing goes with the Godhead. You preach the Godhead, the one person in the Godhead, which is Jesus Christ, body, soul, and spirit. They are all connected, which makes them all one. And they hate you for it. You're dealing with, and they don't want to, they, they love their error. They love promoting falsehood. The thing goes for all the doctrines. When they try to push that you can lose your salvation, you show in Scripture, you're sealed into the day of redemption. Okay, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. But you can know you have eternal life. You're only capable of believing because of the Word of God. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Salvation is His salvation when it comes to eternal salvation. The your salvation has to do with this life as a Christian. How are you going to fare in this life of the Christian? Or are you going to be taken down right away? And you're going to be standing before Jesus Christ, the judgment seat of Christ, holding a penny in your hand. A copper penny. I'm just using that as an example. I don't know how the rewards are going to go, the, the crowns of rewards. But the point is, is you get taken out quick because you don't stand. You don't get hardly anything at the judgment seat of Christ. But the spirit of error, when you show someone the the Word of God and absolute truth. There's people that have shown me stuff, and I said, okay, what about these scriptures over here? They're failing to compare scripture with scripture with scripture. They're not rightly dividing. There's times I've been caught doing that, and I was wrong. I wasn't rightly dividing, comparing scripture with scripture with scripture. Okay? There's times where I didn't take correction, not because I have a spirit of error, and there's other brethren out there in ministry, and other brothers and sisters of Christ, period, it's not because they have the spirit of error. You have to compare Scripture with Scripture with Scripture, like we're doing here. Okay. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Romans 1.21 says, Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Remember, there's only one Catholic G, God the Father. So when they knew God the Father, they glorified Him not as God the Father. You say you're adding a Scripture. No, I'm not. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, there is but one capital G God, the Father. Even our God, it says, our God, capital G, and Father. God the Father is in Scripture. Capital G God is a reference to the Father. It says, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. We show them the true God of Scripture, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. What is their attitude? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. I want to make up a God that best suits me. I want to be God. I want to be the final authority. So I'm going to invent a Jesus that best suits me. And what usually happens every time? And their foolish heart was darkened. What did we talk about earlier how true confession comes from the heart in part one? With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Their foolish heart was darkened. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. When they knew God, they worshipped him not as God. 
We come as Christians and say, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. When Jesus, God, the Father, manifests in the flesh, was right before their eyes saying, I am God, they denied it. The same thing's going on today. And because we are now connected, I talked about this, you have our soul is connected to our body and we're spiritually dead. That's the lost state of man. Mankind. Men and women. The soul, I mean the body sins, it affects the soul and it scars the soul. When we get saved, all our sins are forgiven. Okay? God does the spiritual circumcision. Snip. Now our body is not connected to our soul. What is our soul connected to? Jesus Christ. That's why we're part of the body of Christ. That's why His righteousness is imputed to us. That's why when God looks at us, trying to see our sin, He sees Jesus Christ. That blood that was shed to wash away our sins. That's what it's talking about. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Romans 1.21, we read it. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. John 14.6 says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. you got to go through the body to get to the soul. That's said of everybody. Verse 7, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know Him and have seen Him. We read, No man hath seen God at any time. Well, that's talking about, you know, they'll admit that maybe that's talking about the Father. But all, there's other times where capital G is not talking about the Father. No, capital G, God, is the Father. It's the soul. It's connected to God, to Jesus Christ, which is the body. That's what makes him one. But, no. but Jesus is saying, you want to see God the Father? Look at me. Not me. I'm saying, Jesus saying, look at me. Okay? You've seen God the Father. He that hath seen me has seen God the Father. 8. Philip saith unto him, Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been a long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? What do we read in 1 John 4, 6? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Anybody that's following this ministry, you don't know who Jesus Christ is? And you've been following this ministry for this long, and you still don't know who Jesus Christ is? It's God the Father. He's God fully and completely. The soul connected to the body. Have, have thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? How many times have we got to say this, brother, says Christ? You want to see God the Father? You look at the body. Who's the body? Jesus Christ. You want to see the soul of Philip Newton? You look at the body. Now you've seen the soul of Philip Newton. Where my soul is connected to my body at one time. I know it's severed. I'm connected to Jesus Christ. That's why we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But you look at my soul, you see my body. Now they're not connected. This filthy, wicked flesh, sinful flesh, hasn't been redeemed yet. We're two-thirds redeemed. One day we're going to be fully redeemed. And this wretched body is going to go to waste and just cease to exist. We're going to be transformed in a blink of an eye, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Okay, The, the corruptible shall put on incorruption. We're going to get rid of this body right now because it's not, we're connected to Jesus Christ now. We are one with Christ. We're all one in Christ Jesus. But you see there, we have got, back to 1 John 4, 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. It's just so simple for us who are saved, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the Spirit of God in us, and the Spirit in God in us, through the written word, I can do a teaching, and a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ can say, I was just reading that, and look what else the Lord showed me. And I can go, that's amazing. And add that to my study, and, you know, we can have true fellowship. Because he that is of God, heareth God. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He that we are of God, he that knoweth God, heareth us. We can have that fellowship. 
But these people that are vehemently defending the Trinity, this pagan philosophy, adding terms to the Bible that's not in the Bible, having a lighter attitude towards sin, changing the gospel, the changed life gospel, I can't have fellowship with them. They don't hear me. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. See, it makes a very distinction that, hey, he, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. When we preach the true plan of salvation that leads to a changed life, the changed life gospel, the death, the old man dies with Jesus Christ, is crucified on the cross with Christ. The new man is raised up with Jesus Christ, new creature in Christ Jesus, the changed life gospel. When we preach the major doctrines, eternal security, the Bible version issue, that the, the heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay? That how he's elevated his word, in the Old Testament talk about how God has elevated his word above his name. Okay. Jesus opens his mouth in the book of Revelation and wipes out the 200 man, million man army with his word. But we preach the, the Bible version issue. We preach eternal security. We preach the Godhead. We preach dispensational teaching. We preach um, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. Okay. We preach on hell. Okay. It's, hell is real and it's not the grave. Hell is just not annihilation. You go to hell, you will burn and get tossed in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. We preach these things, okay, because God is in us. We preach these things to encourage the brethren, to keep your to help strengthen your walk with the Lord, and to keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. That's true love. I mean, I'm here for you. You want you need help mowing your lawn? <laughs> I can mow your help mow your lawn or even mow your lawn for you. But true love for the brethren isn't mowing lawns. Okay, True love for the brethren is holding them accountable to the Word of God. Helping to encourage them to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. Okay, Help them with repentance. That's why the Bible says we're supposed to confess our faults one to another. Not our sins, our faults one to another. But notice how one minute it's like they have to have God in you. It goes hand in hand. Loving the brethren go hand in hand with having the Spirit of God in you. How do these people who vehemently defend the Trinity, how do they treat us, brothers and sisters in Christ, who stand for the King James Bible and what it teaches in the Bible, the Godhead? How do they treat us? Let's keep going. I'll right, start from the beginning. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. The new man. The new creature in Christ Jesus. And knoweth God. The Spirit comes in and brings you into all truth. The Spirit of God. Not God the Spirit. The Spirit of God. The connection. The word of shows connection. That Spirit belongs to God the Father. Not God the Spirit just severing that connection and making him a completely separate God. Okay? The Spirit of God. You knoweth God. Verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Okay? I do not, I mean, this is talking about brothers in Christ. But when I saw that uh, Edward P.F. was an error, I didn't show hate or disdain or bitterness or anything toward him, and I still don't. Okay, uh, I, He was professing to be a Bible-believing Christian. He started promoting things of a false gospel, a changed life gospel, a crossless gospel, a no resurrection gospel, and I tried to correct him saying, hey, you know, try to treat him like a brother. Hey, you're starting to, you're starting to steer, because remember, Edward P.F., a lot of you don't know who he is, but those who do know who he is, he's a man that he used to follow King James Video Ministries. The gospel that they preached, the changed life gospel that comes from the Bible that uh, King James Video Ministries preached, he used to say amen to. Now he preaches 100%, he did a 180, now he preaches 100% against it. 
I don't believe he was saved to begin with, but I don't believe that now. But looking back, when I first confronted him on it, when he started steering away from the true plan of salvation, I showed him love like you would for a brother in Christ. And I tried to show him the scriptures that he was ignoring and twisting and just throwing it out because he felt like throwing it out. Okay. He had hate and disdain for me. He treated me with hate, anger, bitterness. What does this say here? That we just read. Right. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. How we treat one another and how we treat absolute truth determines whether we have the Holy Spirit in us. John 14, 23 reads, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I don't know how many times I've got to preach this, brothers and sisters of Christ, because some of you, not all of you, some of you are falling back into the trap of, of love is just a fleshly feeling. It's flesh. Lusts of the flesh. That's not love. True love is action. True love for a brother or sister in Christ is how you treat them. Do you point them to this book? Do you preach absolute truth to them? Do you hold them accountable to this book? Do you encourage them to get back up when they fall? Are you there to help them when they go through hard times in this world, whether it's financial or physical? It's action. It's not this flesh feeling. Matthew chapter 23, verse 36, it says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Capital Lord, thy God. He's talking about the Father. Capital G, God, is a reference to the Father. And it says, Lord thy God. How many people do you hear say, Jesus is my Lord, yet when you talk to him, oh, but he's not the Father. I thought you said Jesus is your Lord. That's saying he's the Father. Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And you look at these people that vehemently defend this Antichrist and Antichrist spirit through the Trinity. They don't love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. You look at them and they're, they're just going off into the world. The ways of the world. But what's the second one? This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. What did we start this with? Uh, chapter 4, 1 John 4, uh, verse 1. Beloved, believe not in your spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. They do not want you loving the Lord thy God with all your body. I'm sorry. Lord thy God with all your heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. They don't want you doing that. And in turn, when you look at these people, they don't love the brethren. Now, I'm talking truly say brethren, but brothers and sisters of Christ, have you looked at them? Have you seen how they turn on each other even? They go crazy and turn on each other. I mean, there's a lot of times that I disagree with some of the brethren, and I don't go crazy in making 50 million videos because I disagree with one of the brethren. I don't go and try to do personal attacks. You see what I'm saying? They go hand in hand. But you got these false prophets coming in promoting a fake Jesus, an antichrist, with an, and getting people to receive an antichrist spirit because they're preaching a false gospel, a change, no change life gospel. You just believe in your head and you're saved. You continue living however you want to live. You are your own God. You're your own Lord. 1 John 4.1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Okay? When it means spirits, plural, whether they are of God, it's talking about the Holy Spirit in each person. You need to try the people to see if they have the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God in them. 
Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Absolutely. Well, love is just this fleshly feeling and everything. And love for the brethren is, you know, donating a lot of money to this Babel building. <laughs> love for the brethren. And it's like, true love, the Bible teaches it time and time again, true love is an act of your will. It's not a flesh feeling. It's not a burning in the bosom. Okay? These charismatic, charismatic wing nuts that get all about the flesh and get so fleshly and out of control. It's not love. That's the flesh. Oftentimes, almost all the time, it's demon possession. We say demon possession, it's the Antichrist spirit. Okay. Back to 1 John 4, verse 9. In this was manifest the love of God towards us. See, it talks about loving the brothers and sisters in Christ, and it goes back to God's love. It goes back to us loving God, and then God's love for us. Okay, and this was manifest, the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. That's important, brothers and sisters Christ. We truly, who believe in the Godhead, we believe the Son of God. Capital S, Son of God the Father. They're connected. That's why they're one and the same. When you switch that around to God the Son, you destroy the text. And you make it a completely lowercase g God, a completely separate God that has no connection to God the Father. None whatsoever. Their own diagram shows, I don't know how many times I have to say it, their own diagram shows that the Son of God, they destroy it and say God the Son, and then say He has no connection to the Father. They just have a diagram at the very center, they have God. But they all are God, but they have no connection to each other. Jesus is the Son of God, is not the Son of God anymore. He's just God the Son, and there's no connection to God the Father. None. But we see here, only begotten Son into the world that He might live, that we might live through Him. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Notice what it just said there, that we might live through Him. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You have to go through Jesus Christ, which is the body, to get to the soul. The Father. God. Truly God. It's the Father. We see that there. Verse 10. He, verse 10 Herein is love, not that we loved God, past tense, but that He loved us, past tense, and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Past event. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also to love one another. It talks about the love that God, the act that God did on the cross. Okay. Turn to John 3.16. The one that everybody loves, John 3.16. What's this love that talks about if God so loved us? John 3.16. For God so loved, past tense the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. See, the Bible versions try to take out begotten. It's either He gave His only Son, or it's His one and only Son. But the Bible talks about when it does the lineage, going all the way back to uh, Adam, it says, Adam, who is the Son of God. Adam was the created Son. Jesus is the begotten Son. He's actually God manifest in the flesh. Adam was just created. All right. Only begotten Son, the whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you say Jesus is not the Father, you're saying He's not the begotten Son. You're saying He's not the capital S Son of God. Verse 17, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I have to under, underline that because people keep saying, and I've been saying it wrong, so I'm going to try to start saying it right. Jesus Christ paid for the sins of the world. But here's where I was getting it wrong. I kept saying He took on the debt of the world, so He didn't really pay for everybody's sin. I was getting kind of confused myself. But let me show you where God corrected me. Jesus Christ paid for the sins of the world. That's truth. But the sins of the world, all the sins of the world... They're not forgiven. And we're going to show that here. They're not forgiven. 
You have to go to the cross to get your sins forgiven. You have to go through Jesus Christ, who is God, according to the Scriptures, to get your sins forgiven. Okay? He took on the price of the sins of the world. He paid the price for the sins of the world. But a man who rejects Jesus Christ is not forgiven. They will have to answer for every sin they've ever committed to Jesus Christ at the great white throne if they die in their sins. If they never come to the cross, that past event, broken in repentance. Verse 18, that's why it says, through him might be saved. You have to go through Jesus Christ to get forgiveness, to be forgiven, to get saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Once again, the Satanists out there, the Antichrist, the Antichrist spirit that's going around, they like to switch that over to God the Son and take away the connection that Jesus has to God the Father. There's only one God, it's the Father. If he has no connection to God the Father, then he's not the Son of God. Okay? We have a connection to God the Father today, how? Through Jesus Christ. That's how. But Jesus came and said, God's my Father. And they went to stone him because he was trying to make himself equal with God. We'll get to that verse. But once again, we see Son of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't let them deceive you. We believe in the Son of God when we believe the Godhead of the King James Bible. They reject the Son of God, of God, the connection that the Son has to the Father when they switch it around and say, God the Son. They're the ones that deny the Son of God for their pagan antichrist, false Christ. Verse 19, And this is that the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Would we just read up there? About their, uh, their foolish heart was darkened? Why is that? Because they don't want the light. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. What does Satan do? He comes around as an antichrist, with that antichrist spirit, and he promises in the world, you can keep those evil deeds and call yourself a Christian. You can keep living like the world, looking like the world, acting like the world. You can be the judge of things you might want to give up, and things you're definitely not going to give up. You're your own authority. You can have the world and be a Christian. Their foolish heart was darkened. Why is this, I put it in my notes, why this big push for the Antichrist of the Trinity? So their foolish heart can remain darkened. It says, the lowercase g God's world, who hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. He doesn't want people to get saved. And those who do get saved, he wants to mess you up. He wants to wreck your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The real Jesus Christ. Verse 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's the big push I'm seeing with this Trinity people. They love their sin. They hate the light. They hate the Jesus Christ of Scripture. Please understand, brothers and sisters of Christ, there's some people out there, like me, that's been using these terms falsely, and we're wrong. We come out and say we're wrong. We don't hate the light. We were wrong to use those Trinity terms, to use terms that aren't found in Scripture, to be promoting where we preach the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, but then we promote with false terms a pagan Christ. I was wrong for doing that. Okay, We have sorrow in our heart. Our heart's about pleasing God. I was wrong, if I've ever said it. I was blessed that by the time I really got into it, uh, Brother Brian at King James Ministries, God really put, uh, convicted his heart about it. And his heart is, has a love for the Lord. And he came out with all those studies, and I started following along, and I started getting really into the Godhead. And I'm like, yep, that's the Godhead. That's what the Bible preaches. 
But in the past, as a false convert, I did mention Trinity and God in three persons, and I'm pretty sure as a saved sinner, I did too, because I brought, I got carried over. Okay? But that's the whole point. They want it, they think they can hide in the shadows and under this false Christ and continue in their wicked sin and live however they want to live. And they are hate. They have, they're hate-filled, they're anger-filled, they're filled with bitterness, and they put on this great show. They can smile behind, in front of the camera and put on a great show, but in real life, you know, what was it, Greg Miller. I was told by people that they tried correcting Greg Miller and everything, and behind the camera, he can get really stern and everything, but he seems like a nice guy behind the camera. But the comments that he wrote to some of those people, and the profanity, the hate... The anger and the bitterness that gets bottled up that'll come out all of a sudden and just lash out at people. Yeah. But why the big push for the Trinity? To keep people from seeing the light. To keep people from following the true Jesus Christ of Scripture. The God, I say it again, Brother Jesus Christ, and I'll keep saying it and I'll keep defending it. What is more popular in this world? The Godhead of the King James Bible or the Trinity? The pagan trinity that has no basis in Scripture. The Catholic trinity that has no basis in Scripture. What's more popular in this world? Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Oh, you want to continue in your sins? Well, I got a Jesus for you. Oh, you want to be so hardcore and strict and good works to be saved? I got, Je I got a Jesus for you. It's like I got a Jesus for anybody. It's like that booth. I remember seeing that cartoon strip where it has the booth where we have the Bible that best fits you and it shows the booth of all these Bibles. It's almost the same thing with Jesus. We've got a Jesus that best suits you. Come with us. Come here and we'll sell you a Jesus that best suits you. That conforms to you. Why? Because everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. As a Christian, when we sin, God sheds a light on that sin and we... Luke 9.23, you don't have to turn there. And he said unto them all, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. When God sheds light on our sin, we're broken. Lord, please forgive me. On these professing Christians out there, when God shines a light through us, through the word of God, shines a light on their sin and everything, what's their attitude? These Trinitarian, hardcore, I'm Trinitarian, what's their attitude? We're not supposed to be judging one another. Who are you to judge me? You're holier than thou. You keep acting holier than thou. You're just so self-righteous. And it gets to the point where they just find out, cloud out, try to say that we're the lost ones and we're the ones that are... And they don't have scripture to back it up. They couldn't back it up with scripture if, if their life depended on it. But that verse right there says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. I remember sitting there talking with the Lord in prayer, and I was like, Lord, just one day I was sitting there, I was like, Lord, why didn't I get saved sooner? I mean, why didn't you come to me and show me this truth sooner? And in doing this study, I come across that verse, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. I was very fleshly as a false convert, as a professing Christian. I loved my sin. I loved the flesh. I loved the parties. Um, when I do parties, that's what it was at these battle buildings. We had parties, flesh parties, in the youth group as a kid growing up. It was all about, you know, fun, 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 flesh, flesh, flesh. The satanic style music, the video games, the movies, the TV shows. Yeah, I loved it. What does it say? That for everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light. I wasn't ready for truth then, and God knew it. I would have hated the light back then, because I was just too much having fun. God waited for the right time in my life where I was broken. And then he shined a light on all my sins. And you know what? That's what repentance is. God shines a light on, on what your state is, your current state is. I'm truly lost. I'm not saved. I'm on my way to hell. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell. And I deserve to go to hell for sinning against God. And you fall down on your knees before the Lord. Why didn't I do that when I was younger? Because of that verse right there. But as a Christian, that's our attitude. When God sheds light on our sins, we fall on our knees. 
deny yourself. We drop the pride. We fall on our knees and say, Lord, forgive me of this sin. Lord, forgive me of the sin of using the word Trinity. Forgive me of the sin of adding to your word and saying God in three persons. Forgive me of the sin of saying God the Son and totally destroying the Son of God. What the Bible says, the Son of God. Totally destroying it, the connection that the Son has with the Father. And so on and so forth. We come broken. That's the difference. They don't. Why is that? Because they have an antichrist spirit. That's the true test. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth. I had to underline that because brother says Christ, it's not speaking truth. It's always good to speak the truth. And make sure your truth lines up with the Bible. But it's more important that you're doing truth. Jesus is the capital L Lord of your life. He commands you obey. Are you doing truth? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds, remember, whatever you do in word or deed, do all to the, in the name of Jesus Christ. That his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. That's the whole thing that separates us, brothers and sisters of Christ, true Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women from these fake and false wolves in sheep's clothing, false brethren, Sows, as the Bible calls them, uh, dogs returning to their own vomit, sows wallowing into their mire. What God thinks of these false converts who try to pretend and hide amongst the body of Christ as Christians when they're not Christians. I would say Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women because the word Christian has been abused and misused in this world today. That they are rotten God, the changed life in a Christian... That's evidence that someone's gotten saved. You're the new creature. Jesus comes into your life. He is capital L, Lord of your life. He commands, you obey. Well, there's no changed life. You're not saved. That's why we say that, brothers and sisters of Christ. No changed life, no resurrection gospel. He that believeth, that just said there. Because I have a lot of notes on here. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. It's evidence of salvation, the changed life. People love John 3.16, but they don't like to keep reading. Okay, Now, going back to tr doing truth. John 17.17 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. How do we know how to do truth? God has given us his word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And we just read there, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. That's how you know someone's saved and born again. That's how you do the, the, the new life. The Holy Spirit comes in. He opens the scriptures to us. And he starts showing us our life and saying, okay, that's got to go. That's got to go. Okay, every morning you wake up. I'm pointing over at my bed. Every morning that you wake up, you get up, you start with the day with the Word of God. Every day you lay down at night, you need to start reading the Word of God before you go to bed. Even if it's just a, a quick verse. No matter how you know, late you've stayed up or you've forgotten and time is flying by, start your day with the Word of God, end your day with the Word of God. The do's and the don'ts, the stands that you're supposed to take for the major doctrines, for the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. Put on that whole armor of God every day. Okay, we'll get back into the armor of God studies eventually. But God put on my heart to do this study, and I just I put out studies as God puts it on my heart. Or sometimes the brethren will ask questions that are pretty neat questions, and I'll do a study. But for the most part, what God puts on my heart. Okay. But sanctify for thy truth. That's doing truth. So we get back up there and it says, uh, 1 John 4, 9. And this was manifest the love of God towards us, that, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. But you have to go through the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, who is God the Father, manifest in the flesh, the body of God the Father. They're connected. The soul. Okay. 
John 5.11 reads, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be fulfilled, might be full, sorry, full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Jesus laid down his life for us. There's no greater love than that. Okay? God manifests in the flesh. God the Father laid down his life for us through Jesus Christ. When you give your life to Christ, now you do whatever, whatsoever he commands you. But there's no greater love than this. What's the opposite of a friend? Enemy. Philippians 3.18 reads, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. The opposite of friend is enemy. And the, tr and the definition here of a true friend of Jesus Christ is what? Someone who does whatsoever he commands us. Once again, is Jesus Lord of your life? He commands you obey. I keep coming across um, professing, I'm just using this for this example, professing Christian women, and I hit them up with something so simple, I just say, hey, the Bible says, and the book of John, that Jesus himself says that if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay? True love for Jesus Christ is your heartfelt desire to keep his word. That's how you have a perfect heart with the Lord. I even quote this verse to him about, if you, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. So then I ask him a simple thing. I said, what are the three commands God gives on the appearance of a woman? And they flip out on me. Most of the time they flip out on me. Who are you to judge me? And I don't care what you say. That's just your opinion. That's just the way you look at it. That's just your interpretation. And on and on and on and on. And I asked him something so simple. It's just the three commands that God gives on the appearance of a woman. Right? Now, back to 1 John 4, 9. Yeah. Remember, the opposite of friend is enemy. What's true love? Once again, true love for Jesus Christ is action, keeping his word. True love for the brethren is keeping God's word to the brethren. It says we're to love one another, we're to encourage one another, we're to lift one another up. We're supposed to keep each other's eyes on Jesus Christ. We're to confess our faults one to another. And yes, we're supposed to be there to help them Physically, when they're desperately in need. Physically or financially. We need to be there to help. Right. Not do everything for them, but to help. But you go back to 1 John 4, 9. Notice where it said towards the end, it said, And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Okay, I've already had to do this in a previous study. When I said, show me where Jesus got... I, like I said, I was saying it wrong, but I'd always say, show me where Jesus paid for everybody's sins. Where it says... All the sins of the world are paid for. Present tense, not past tense. Present tense, show me. Now I need to say, show me where all the sins of the world have been forgiven. Everybody's sins been forgiven. Because Jesus died on the cross, that means everybody's sins are forgiven. All right? That's what God kind of corrected me. I'm not above correction. But propitiation, they'll go to this verse, this is one of the verses. Propitiation. And it says, the act of appeasing wrath or... Considerating the favor of an offended person. This is a Webster's 1820 Dictionary person. The act of making propitious. So I was like, okay, what does propitious mean? The act of making propitious. When you look at propitious, it says disposed to be gracious or merciful. Ready to forgive sins and bestow blessings. And it's applied to God. Okay, it's applied to capital G, God the Father. So when you see here, it says, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Only God the Father can do that. So if Jesus Christ is not the son of God, the body and the soul, you know, body, soul, and spirit, he's the body of the Godhead, he's connected to the Father, which makes them one and the same, he would not be capable of being the propitiation for our sins if he's not God fully and completely. But notice it says they're ready to forgive sins. 
See, that's where I kept saying it wrong, okay? All the sins of the world are paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross, a past event, but all the world's sins are not forgiven. You want your sins forgiven? You need to go to the cross broken in a repentant state. Godly sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. You want, that's why you want your sins forgiven. You're going to Him because you're sorry for the sins you've committed against Almighty God, your Creator. Mm -hmm. And you have sorrow for it. That's true biblical repentance. But they try to get rid of true biblical repentance. Mm -hmm. So when we read that uh, verse, 1 John 4, 9, there's a lot into it. But once again, it says, His capital S Son. That shows connection to God the Father. When you say, the Son of God. That's why when I say, when you go to put them together, brother says Christ, I don't, it's not God the Son. That's Satanism. It's not God the Holy Spirit. That's Satanism. Okay? You have God the Father. You have Jesus Christ, the Son of God the Father. Son of God. Capital G God. Only one God, the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. I'll keep robing that in because it's, someday it might reach these people eventually. And then you have the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. It's the capital S Spirit of God, the Father. There's distinction, body, soul, and spirit. But they're all one person. One person, Jesus Christ. In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's only one person in the Godhead. It's Jesus Christ. You look at Jesus Christ, you see God the Father. You talk to Jesus Christ, and God the Father speaks to you through Jesus Christ. He speaks to you through the Holy Spirit. His Spirit. They're connected. Okay. We're going to end part two here, and we're going to start on part three. But remember, brothers and sisters of Christ, it's so important to realize that love for the brethren is connected to love for the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, the Jesus Christ who is God the Father. And when you look at these people and their connection to this pagan trinity, this antichrist, this antichrist spirit, they don't have much love for the brethren. Their idea for love for the brethren is just all fleshly. I said I loved you, that means I love you. It's not based on action. Okay? That's not based on action at all. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, I will stop here and we'll move on to part three.